Hey guys, we got another wonderful installment of Tech Knitwit production video here tonight. We have this wonderful TG010040, and we got a Ryzen 3700X we are about to stick in this bad black mamma jamma. This thing is awesome. I mean, freaking cool. But uh, already we have the 16 gigs of RAM in here and the 3070 RTX. Uh, I just want to talk real quick about the upgrade. If you're going to do this upgrade, I would say do the GPU first, then the CPU. Uh, RAM in the beginning if you can, because of course if it doesn't have dual channel RAM, that's a big importance. Just FYI, I do have other videos on the TG01 about cooling. Uh, I'm going to have a bunch of stuff coming out. So just uh, keep that in mind if you're, you know, keep looking forward to stuff like that. It's very important. Everything on this table is going to be used for this upgrade, this isopopical alcohol. You're going to need some paper toweling, some thermal paste. This is going to be important because you cannot use the heat sink that's in this box. Uh, give me a couple seconds, guys. I'm going to reconfigure this set. You're also going to need an iFixit kit or something to unscrew screwies because, you know, screwies don't stand by themselves. They like to stay where they're at. Yeah, right, guys, we scored a 9,914 with the stock CPU, and we're going to see what we get with this RTX 3070 16 gigs of RAM and a 3700X. But anyways, guys, we're going to get this big silver bad mamma jamma inside this CPU socket and we are going to have some benchmarking fun stick with me all right guys we're going to get into this wonderful upgrade and we are going to upgrade this tg01 with this wonderful 3700x uh, a couple things you're going to need is isotopical alcohol you're going to need some thermal paste some um, paper tolling you're going to need the processor itself and you're going to need a t5 torx head to get all the wonderful screws undone in here and we are going to go ahead and grab a t5 torx head we're going to grab these three tabbies right here one two three it's gonna swing open like a door. Gonna go ahead and pop the cable right here, set this guy off to the side. And the first screw you're gonna grab, gonna be this guy right here. That's gonna release these two doors right here. Set that off to the side, and we got one more. Whoo, screwdriver going offline. We got one more right here we gotta take off. Tech new, you crazy. And that door comes swinging on out and forward. This one is up and then out and then set these guys off to the side. Of course, if you have hard drives connected, you're gonna disconnect your SATA cable or your power cables. You can remove these cables if you're not, you're not comfortable with all the stuff in here. All right, guys, I'm gonna take the cables out of the way. So I'm down on the bottom of the power supply. All right, so the first thing you're gonna do is reach in here and get this blue, yellow, black, and red cable unplugged. That is the fan uh, connector for the CPU heatsink. Go ahead and unplug that and then Undo two of these first corners, and this is an Intel style heatsink. The socket is an Intel uh, style, not the actual socket the CPU is in, but the plate that the uh, CPU is on. I don't know if it's just HP's way of saving money. So if you ever want to get a heating or cooling solution for this, not a heating, of course you don't want to heat your processor. If you want to get a cooling solution for this, it's going to be an Intel style. I will try to see if I can modify this Wraith cooler to fit on this bad mamma jamma. Go ahead and uh, unscrew these T5 Torx heads. I do about three or four turns on all of them because it is spring loaded and it does keep tension down on your processor. There we go. Should start clicking when they are all the way out. And see that one's now popped. And then we, usually you're gonna do this with the computer flat, not on an angle. I'm just doing this so you guys can see what I am doing. I'm gonna hold some pressure on here so it doesn't go flying down into my GPU. And then our cooler is off. And we're going to clean some thermal paste off the bottom here. That's where we're going to need the isotropical alcohol. However the heck you say it. And get your alcohol going on your uh, stuff. We're just going to clean this off. We're going to do the same thing for the processor. Uh, just because you don't want thermal paste all over the place. Uh, thermal paste is conductive. Not all of it is conductive, but some are, some aren't. So try to keep it off your motherboard. Now the alcohol on your motherboard is not going to hurt it. Uh, of course, be careful with the isotropical alcohol on your table. It will wreck the finish. Pour some more alcohol to get the rest of the CPU clean. I'm gonna take the microfiber cloth and just wipe this down to make sure it's nice and clean. And there we go. That is now good. I would refrain from letting this touch your motherboard. It can pull up components and stuff like that. So you just want to kind of keep it bunched up. Go in there and then there you go. So this, there's a little handle right here. You push down and out, not very hard, and then it pops up and it's latched in there. And then there's another latch that you kind of feel for it. It almost feels like you break it. Then you just pull straight out with the processor. Be careful not to touch these pins, drop these, because once these pins get bent, it's usually junk. Sometimes you can repair it, but 
Trust me, it's not fun to do. I've done it before and it's a headache. Set that off to the side where it won't get damaged and then we're gonna grab our Ryzen 3700X. So that was the stock Ryzen uh, 5 that did uh, 3.6, or no, sorry, 3.4 gigahertz and it boosted to 4.1. This is gonna be 3.66 and it's gonna boost to 4.4, so we are gonna gain performance there. We're also, that's a six core, six thread, and this is eight cores, 16 threads. Go ahead and open your box. And our processor's in the front. This is what we wanna be careful with. Set this off to the side. I'm just gonna set that right there for now because I wanna show you guys this cool cooler. I wish I could put this thing in here, but you can't. But uh, it is a really nifty cooler. AMD did a good job with their coolers here. And this is what this bad mamma jamma looks like. It's a pretty hefty cooler. It's got some extra cables for uh, connecting you know, stuff to your motherboard, RGB stuff and all that, because I'm pretty sure this is an RGB fan. Of course, this motherboard does not have that compatibility on it, so we're gonna set this off to the side. I will see if I can get this just to run the fan on here and maybe convert it, but we will see. Uh, I'll need some time. Also, I will have other videos on doing cooling and other upgrades with the TG01. A couple things with this, when you're taking this out of the package, you need to be careful. Uh, it is not, it is a delicate piece of technology. It's also an expensive piece of technology. So you want the processor facing like this, and there's gonna be a tab here that you're gonna grab and just make sure it's not gonna pop out. So keep that flat and pull up. That's the best way I've found to do it. That's the most carefulest. And they actually put indents right here for your fingers to grab. Be careful, because it's like your fingertips grabbing it. The rising writing is gonna go towards the front of the case, so the processor's actually gonna go in like this. And we are gonna be like a very careful crane, so we don't drop this, and we are gonna put her on in. Kind of wiggle and jiggle, just a little bit. It lets me in there there we go and it falls right into the socket it should be really easy you shouldn't have to push any pressure down don't ever if it is not wanting to go don't push pressure down there's something wrong a bent pin something or a pin's broken off hopefully that never happens to you and then you're going to grab this little latch and you're going to go forward down and let it click and that's the process in there i usually pull up just a little bit to see if it's locked it is locked now onto the hardest part of this upgrade, guys, and this is put applying thermal paste. I love Master Pro Gel V2. I don't like the wide applicator. They got one that's like this wide. People have had problems with it. It doesn't come in a sealed package like this, so it doesn't keep the thermal paste nice and fresh. Go ahead and rip your package open. I will have a link in the description for this stuff down below. They usually come in larger tubes, but this is all I could find on Amazon at the time. And there's our wonderful thermal applicator. Some people like to use this, some people don't. Uh, with this one, because of the weird dye and all that stuff, I am going to actually apply uh, thermal paste to this. I'm going to set the dye on there, see how it looks. Uh, some people don't do this, some people do. I'm going to take the old processor and I'm going to put this in this case. So it's protected because it's still a good processor. It's a Ryzen 5 uh, 3500. Set it down in the case. Just be careful with it and lock it down, that way it is safe. It does come with a cool Ryzen 7 sticker that you can stick on the front of your case if you want to. So this big bad black mam jamma is about to get a really nice upgrade, 3700X. We're gonna grab our master gel, pop the tab off, and we are gonna come down here. I like to do little dots. This stuff is uh, pretty pliable. You don't wanna put a ton. Some people say do a pea size, but I just do a couple little dots, little lines, because I mean, you don't need a ton. That's about all you need. Uh, some people put more. Uh, it's just going to flam out to the side. I want to make sure that that whole die is in good contact with this so I have good thermals. You can take your applicator, 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 and run it on here. And this is how this is used. Leave some in the middle so it squishes out. But this is just how I like to do this. Everybody has their own way. Of course, you get an extra bunch on there, so there's probably not enough on there now. I'm just going to add just a little tab more. I like to do a test fitment, screw some of the screws down, see how it is applying itself. Uh, be careful, this stuff gets all over everything, and it's hard to get off your hands unless you use alcohol. How we took this out, the wire going up top is how it's going to go back in. It's got a weird bolt pattern. Remember I was telling you that this is an Intel-style uh, bolt pattern. The socket is AM4, but this bolt pattern is Intel. 
So we're going to come back in here and we're going to get the CPU lined up. We're not going to plug it in. We're just going to get it threaded in on the screws. I'm going to hold my finger on the top and I'm going to get one corner, just like a little half thread because they're spring loaded and they're, sometimes you can uh, get three of them and then four won't, the fourth one won't go. I'm going to go ahead and sink this guy on down. Try to do even turns on kitty corner. So if you do a couple turns on here, do it on this corner. And these go till they're tight. And just because I'm weird, I'm gonna check my thermal paste to make sure it's, it came out good. Usually I, I snug these down and I wait a couple minutes. Um, movie magic, I, you guys don't have to wait for that. So let it set for a couple minutes, see if the thermal paste uh, evenly applies, and then come back in here and loosen these up. So of course you wanna do it on even X and even X, so each corner. If you do a couple turns on a corner, you want to go to the other corner and do a couple turns. Otherwise, uh, it can jam up on you. And then it feels like you're trying to fight it. See, like it did right there, it just jammed up on me. So if it jams up, stop and go to another screw. Now, this is something you don't have to do if you're really experienced, but I just, I, I really like my thermals to be really good. And if they're not, is it still on there a little bit? And there we go. That looks like a good application. It didn't, uh, there is a little bit extra in there, but that looks like a good application. The whole die right there is covered. So we're gonna come back down and we're just gonna apply this again. Some people might say, well, you already smushed it out. It's not gonna apply good back. I've never had problems doing it this way. So when you check your work, it's kind of like uh, measure twice, cut once. I don't know, I like that model. It, it works well for me. But uh, this bad man pajama is gonna have, this is a full upgrade other than 32 gigs of RAM and uh, doing some craziness like that. And these are the type of screws you should feel like it's tight where it can't go anymore. And don't try to crank on it, just bring it tight. The springs do all the work for you. There we go, the heat sink is reinstalled and now we are gonna go ahead and plug the wire in right up on top here. And there you go, that's plugged in. And that's pretty much the upgrade. Go ahead and plug your GPU back in. If you unplugged it, if you didn't, then you're good to go. Now you're just gonna reassemble the case the same way you took it apart and uh, meet me back for a benchmark, guys. All right, guys, so we got done with the upgrade. We plugged everything in and this is the screen that we came to. We are getting Bryles revision data and it's saying uh, we got 864.43VF03 blah, 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 bunch of information up top. And it's saying, hey, you got uh, FTPM MV structure change, blah, blah, blah. It's seen that we just threw a 3700X in here. Well. Uh, we got to get it working. We want a game on it. We want a benchmark on it. So let's go ahead and we are just going to do what it says. It says press Y to reset the FTPM. And that's pretty much that in a nutshell. It's going to reset it. It should reboot. There you go. Now we're booting. It was that simple. Just hit yes on the keyboard and then it'll boot in the windows and we're going to get a benchmark rocking and rolling for you guys. Hey guys. Oh, wow. I am just... <sighs> I'm really surprised. This is an awesome freaking score. 12,400 versus the 9,914 that it was. Um, yeah, I guess the GPU. It's a CPU, dumbass. It does matter. Uh, if you want some better stats and performance when you're gaming, this is going to be the last stop on this road. You do your GPU, PSU, and then uh, CPU. Of course, RAM's in the beginning of that. But yeah, uh, let's just go over the FPSs if we had this upgrade. So Battlefield 5, we're gonna be looking at 125 frames plus. Uh, Apex Legends, we're gonna be looking at 140 frames plus. This is all on 1440p Ultra, guys. Uh, GTA 5 is 80 frames plus. Fortnite is 135 frames plus. And let's look at Red Dead Redemption 2, 50 frames plus, our, our game killer that likes to kill all GPUs. 
yeah guys i mean hands down uh i was kind of against this upgrade but now you're getting two thumbs up for me uh, it's changed my uh oh look because 3d marks a synthetic benchmark and usually gives you a pretty good idea of where you're going to be at with your directx 12 gaming i have not ran directx 11 but usually it's around the same thing if not a higher score because it's, it's less performance needed by the actual pieces the ryzen 7 3700x this was a freaking awesome upgrade um, a couple things I will say, we went from a 6-core to an 8-core, uh, of course, 6 threads and eight, uh, 16 threads, so there's a difference there. Um, the gigahertz, uh, this is 4.4 boosted, and the 5 was 4.1. Uh, of course, it was a stock 3.4 with the Ryzen 5, and the Ryzen 3700X was 3.66. So there is a difference there in actual gigahertz. I will pop up Task Manager for you guys really quick and just let you see that we do have all eight cores and it is running. Of course, our memory is running at its speed that it's supposed to be running at. And yeah, everything's looking good here, guys. Uh, this was another Tech Knitwit Productions videos. I hope you guys like, comment, and subscribe. And Tech Knitwit's out, y'all. This gets two thumbs up of approval from me, guys.